another day, another Boxcore watching episode. We are at episode 23, 22, I don't fucking know. I lost count. My brain is not working properly. We had some good basketball games yesterday, so let's talk about all of those. Uh, first, we start with the Celtics winning against the Nuggets. Yes, well, the, the Denver Nuggets were playing catch-up all day. Uh, I mean, all day, all night, basically. As well, they got down to like 20 points in the second quarter, then they catch caught up a little bit, they almost got the lead and they just lost it again and they were playing catch up to Boston all day and their defense just couldn't hold up as their defense is still rough around the edges to say the least. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. Picked, his, picked the worst time to have his worst game of the season. Jokic was still, you know, okay, not great. Jamal Murray had some good moments. He was not great and well, no one else. That was about it. I guess you can say KCP was really good. And Bruce Brown was okay off the bench, but well, it didn't matter really. And they missed Bones Island a little bit, because maybe they could have kept up offensively if they had Bones Island off the bench, but I don't know if they wouldn't have gave up on 50 points then. And the Celtics continue to be great. Jason Tatum is sensational, he's a super starter before 8 and 5. Consistent this year, brings the defense, he's been sensational. Jalen Brown had a great game, 25, 8 and 8 on 11 of 15 shooting. Great stuff from him. Al Horford made some tough clutch shots. Grant Williams made shots when they needed him to. And they didn't even have Malcolm Brogdon, they're a great team. And they have a high ceiling, as we all know. Jason Tatum, legend superstar, great win for the Celtics. Next up, we have the Magic picking up their second win without Paolo in a row. And well, the Suns just had a down game today, especially defensively. Their offense also couldn't keep up, and I just don't know how to feel about DeAndre Ayton still. He's one hell of a player some days, then he is like an okay player some days, then he is... Mech some days, I don't know, DeAndre Ayton is confusing to me. Devin Booker's been having a little rougher times these last few games, but he's still sensational. He's gonna bounce back, we all know that. Cameron Payne at least is a positive on offense, because he's been figuring that out. And well, the bench seems to be still really good, so the Suns are fine, they are missing Chris Paul, but at the same time, I'm still concerned about the Andre. As for the Magic without Paolo, they still got one of the best young players in the league in France. Wagner who was 17, 6 and 3 today. He was really good. Wendell Carter, one of the best young bigs in the league 20 and 10. He was great. Ball Ball continues to provide value and revive his career as he had 13 and 15. Great stuff from him. The bench also contributed. Good stuff for the Magic. Great win. Then we have the Knicks staying right there in the middle. Uh, 6 and 6 as they win against the Detroit Pistons. For the Pistons, Killian Hayes had to play 34 minutes. That's not fun to watch for the Pistons fans, he made one three, so, well, that's good for the batting people, <laughs> if they still have the courage to bat on Kylian Hayes, he had 11, 6 and 7, he had a great game for his standards, Bojan Bogdanovic continues to be really good, and, well, the biggest problem for the Pistons is they have no shooting outside of Bojan Bogdanovic, who even didn't make a three today, so, they were 22%, they're bad from the three-point line, they were missing K today, obviously, so, a rough time for them, then the Knicks, well, J RJ Barrett had his best game of the season, 35 and 5 on 10 of 17 shooting. Great stuff from him. Jalen Brunson continues to be really solid with 26, 1 and 7 for steals. The bench and the Yankees continue to be really solid. And the Knicks are just right there in the middle. They're gonna be around 500. They're gonna be okay. They're gonna beat some good teams. They're gonna surprise some good teams. They're gonna lose to some bad teams. They're just right there in the middle. Next up, we have the OKC Thunder blowing out the Raptors. As this was just a rough game. Uh, this was just a rough game for the Raptors. They, well, didn't defend well. Couldn't really get their offense going as much. They were trailing the whole game by 20, it felt like. And it was probably like, and I don't remember exactly if it was, you know, the whole game 20, but it felt like it, and it was very close to it, so a rough loss for the uh, Raptors, but they'll bounce back, and a good win for OKC, who are still a frisky team, Shea, 23 and 4, he didn't even have to, you know, play that much minutes, have to, had to be great, uh, Eugene Omorui was great off the bench, 22 points, that was great to see, Trey Mann was pretty okay, Jill Williams was okay, Aaron Wiggins had 17, 5 and 7, he was really good. Poku had 14 and 5, Josh Giddy 15, 9 and 5, just great games for everyone on the OKC Thunder. Good stuff for them, great win for them, they needed this one after the rough few losses these last few games. Then we have the Bucks losing to the Spurs, as they are still without Giannis and Shrew. 
and obviously even Chris Middleton. The Bucks just didn't have enough offensively as well. They couldn't make much shots. Jordan Wara was 3 of 13. Marjan Busham was 4 of 13. Just uh, rough around the edges. Joan Carter was still great with 21 and 6. Brook Lopez was okay. Bobby Portis was okay, but it's just not enough to win against the actually good San Antonio team. And the Spurs, just like the Thunder, bounced back after a few rough losses and they needed it. Devin was selling. Keldon Johnson continued to be great. Jeremy Sohan continues to be great. There have been some comparisons about Dennis Rodman to him. I see some of that. I don't see Dennis Rodman, obviously, but I get the value he has. He's been sensational. And Chris Bassey, I want to give a huge shout out to him. He's been great off the bench for the Spurs these last few games. He had 14 rebounds today. Great stuff from him. Good win for the Spurs, just like the Thunder. They bounce back. Then we have maybe the most miserable team besides the Warriors, young guys. Uh, the Timberwolves lose to the Memphis Grizzlies. Well, the Timberwolves are just one hell of a bad team right now. Carl Anthony Towns at 13 and 10. He was pretty okay to start the season, but he's not been as good as he was last year, and he continues to be pretty dumb out there. You know, so that's pretty bad. Anthony Edwards was great today, and you know, in the minutes without Rudy Gobert and Towns, he was really great. So I don't know. This team is weird. I thought they would be good. They are not good. D'Angelo Russell is one of the worst players in the league to me, especially for his contract. And it's just fucking ugly. It's just fucking ugly for the Timberwolves. The Grizzlies, Dylan Brooks, one good game, one bad game. This was the good game, 21 points. Desmond Bain, 24 points. Jamoran, 28 points. They're just better team, better bench, better players. Good win for them. Jamoran continues to be really good. Brandon Clark had one of the better games once again off the bench. Desmond Bain still really great. Sandy Almama continues to be great for as a rookie. Good win for the Grizzlies. Nothing to say about them. Jamoran is great. Desmond Bain is great. And that's all they need really, right? I mean, that's not all they really need, but you could say the culture is just much better. You know, they have... You, you, can, you see them every time enjoying a win. It's just right. It's just right. And that's all, all it is. Next up, we have the actual best player in the world. Look at Steph Chef Curry, man, my boy, Steph Vardelius, absolutely destroying the Cavs in the fourth quarter as the Warriors move to 5-7 and seven after, you know, the horrible start. Well, the Cavs were, you know, are on a three-game losing streak now after a few rough losses where they probably should have won these games against the Kings and the Clippers, but they are still fine, they are missing some players, they are, you know, well, Isaac Okoro basically forgot how to play basketball, so that's something to worry about. Cherry Osman has been struggling, Kevin Love has been okay, not great, especially today. Donovan Mitchell is great, 29-10-9, he's just great. Darius Garland continues to struggle, you know, the eye is not fine, and he had some flu symptoms, so I'm gonna give him a pass. And Jaren Allett and Evan Mobley are great, hey, the Cavs are great, they just lost to one of the best players ever, so... I think that's nothing to be really worried about for the Cavs. They got the right pieces, they got the right things to figure it out. And the refereeing was horrible. But not against them, for fuck's sake, as the Heter coach said. And she was nasty, man. Nasty stuff. Nasty officiating. And the Warriors still won, because they got the best player in the world. Look at Steph. 44 and 5. He was 15 of 23 from the field. He, how much he had in the fourth quarter, like 16, 18, 17 points, something like that. He had a lot of those points in the fourth quarter, made the shots they needed to be made. Don't take DiVincenzo being back, even though he didn't score. It was great to see him. It unlocked Jordan Poole, who had his best game in a while, 18-4-3 on 6 of 13 shooting. Clay continues to struggle, but at least he didn't shoot as much as he, you know, probably wanted to. And he was kind of benched a little bit. So there's something, and he defended really well, uh, you know, during the fourth quarter, so at least there's that. Kevin Looney continues to be solid, 30 minutes, 7, 9, and 3. Draymond had a great game defensively, and he passed the ball really well, 2, 9, and 13. Wiggins, 20, and 6. All right, solid game, and Anthony Lamb was great, but the story is obviously the bench, well... The kids are not playing, Jamal Green is getting DNPs, Kuminga was there for 4 minutes, and I mean, I would give him more chances, but I get why Kerr doesn't want to give him more chances, so there's that for the Warriors. And last but not least, we have the Lakers moving to the best thoughts in the draft, as they can get Pelicans, Victor Wembanyama, as they lose to the Kings after a De'Aaron Fox masterclass in the fourth quarter. <coughs> this was a back and forth game, where De'Aaron Fox didn't actually score in the first half, 
So there was something to, you know, he didn't expect the first half. I mean, first quarter. Then he was sensational, 32, 7 and 12. He's just been great this season, especially with the pressure around him. The Kings are a great offensive team. The defense is obviously going to be slacking, but they were okay today. Sabonis, 21, 10 and 6. Solid stuff. The bench was solid. The starters were a solid good win for the Kings. And the Lakers are the Lakers. I don't want to talk about them. Anthony Davis isn't, you know, the mega star we want him to be. Russ is pretty okay off the bench, but it's still nothing special. Austin Reeves was great today. And the team is just bad. That's all they are. That's all they're going to be unless they, I don't know what they can do to be great. I don't know. There is no solution to me. They were missing LeBron, obviously. But... That's just about it. F I just don't want to bother talking about the Lakers. We all know what's going on there, so there's that. We, today we have the Nets against the Clippers early, which should be fun. Can't wait to watch that. Then the Jazz against Wizards should be cool. Pacers Raptors, that's my frisky game. Hawks Sixers again. Blazers Mavs should be fine. Some cool games. Can't wait to watch them. Just dissect them and uh, obviously bring you my analysis my thoughts what's happened everything hope you enjoyed like and subscribe and i'll see you all tomorrow